Now that the Browns have traded Amari Cooper away, it is clear the Browns are in a sell mode at 1-5. They have accepted this season is not going anywhere, so try and get some future assets for older players on near expiring contracts. So the purpose of today's video is to look over a couple of trade candidates for the Browns that might be the next ones out the door. But I do believe the Browns are going to be making some more moves, so make sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss a single thing. We're trying to get to 38,000 subscribers, so if you're looking for a free Browns YouTube channel, I invite you to go ahead and subscribe today. Now, after that trade with Amari Cooper, the Browns have a first-round pick of still, of course, second, two-thirds, fourth, and then three six-round draft picks, which I could see them using, like in the Amari Cooper trade, to orchestrate a late day three pick swap and maybe get a earlier pick out of it, like a third from Buffalo. So my first trade candidate to watch for is defensive end Zadarius Smith. I think Zadarius Smith is as good as gone as long as someone is looking to acquire him, which he has played well enough and plays a very valuable position that teams are constantly looking to acquire in the middle of the season that they could make a trade for. The team that comes to mind first is the Detroit Lions. After losing Aiden Hutchinson, Pat Mac, oh, sorry, Adam Schefter on the Pat McAfee show said that he doesn't believe the Lions are going to mortgage their future to try and get a replacement for this year. And so I could see Zadarius Smith going to Detroit for a fourth-round draft pick. So far this year, 99 has 16 tackles, two tackles for loss, and three sacks. So he's put together a decent season, but... Like I said, the Lions are looking to replace Hutchinson, so if they're not looking to mortgage the future, but they want to find a quality replacement or as quality as possible for what was looking to be the front runner for Defensive Player of the Year, Smith is not a bad option. Now, his base salary for this year is super low, like a lot of Browns players, so any team acquiring him would not need much cap space at all. He's only going to occupy probably about... Six hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars of the rest of his bill or the rest of his contract. Uh, former fourth round pick by the Ravens out of Kentucky. He's been a really valuable player in the NFL the last couple of years, if you don't know. So any Lions fans maybe watching this? I mean, he's got three seasons with 10 or more sacks between 2019 and 2022. And of course, Lions fans do know Darius Smith because he played with the Packers. He played with the Vikings. So he could get his third NFC North team under his belt. Uh, since 2022, he has 50, uh, 70 pressures, which ranks 15th in the NFL. And this year, PFF has him ranked 41st out of 114 qualifying edge rushers. But overall, we're looking at a 32-year-old edge rusher who has a very low base salary this year on a team that is clearly selling bye-bye. I, I would be shocked if Darius Smith is on the Browns on November 6th, the day after the NFL trade deadline. If Amari Cooper's gone, any 30-year-old plus player on this team should expect to have uh, their bags packed soon and be on the move as well. And to Darius Smith at the defensive end position, I mean, that's a position that gets traded more than any other spot at the NFL trade deadline. Teams looking to make a push are always looking to add depth to that really important spot. So I could see Smith being the next one out the door. But the biggest bummer for all this for Zadarius Smith is if the Browns do trade him, which I do think they will, it would be nice to have a really nice, young, talented player behind him that could get a larger role, like, say, Alex Wright. And him being on IR is just a big bummer because it's a missed opportunity for him to really step up into a larger starting role and have an awesome second half of the season potentially and give the Browns a sense of what could be Miles Garrett's new running mate for 2025 and beyond. But instead, it'll likely be Okoronkwo and Isaiah McGuire getting a larger role. Guys, we know Cleveland is built different, and so are their fans. And for those fans, there is only one way to protect their gutters. That is Leaf Filter. Leaf Filter has been protecting gutters in Northeast Ohio for nearly 20 years. As the official gutter guard of the Cleveland Browns, Leaf Filter has a limited time offer for Browns fans. Up to 32% off your entire qualified purchase and two free official Browns jerseys at leaffilter.com slash report. An investment in Leaf Filter is an investment engineered to protect your whole home. 
Clog gutters aren't just a nuisance. They can cause extensive water damage and do-it-yourself and store-bought solutions. Maybe cheaper up front, but can cost you more in the long run. Every installation comes with a lifetime no-clogs guarantee. So let Leaf Filters Trusted Pro handle it. Call today to schedule your free gutter inspection and get a no-obligation free estimate. A Leaf Filter Trusted Pro will clean out, realign, and seal your gutters before installing Leaf Filter. Schedule your free inspection now, and for a limited time, get up to 32% off your entire qualified purchase and two free Browns jerseys at leaffilter.com slash report. That's a free inspection, up to 32% off, and two free Browns jerseys with qualified purchase at leaffilter.com slash report. Offer valid on a first-come, first-served basis while supplies last. Full terms and conditions can be found at leaffilter.com slash report. See representatives for warranty details. Following Smith, the next trade candidate that comes to mind is defensive tackle Shelby Harris. Similar to Smith, we're looking at a 30-plus-year-old lineman that is a valuable position for teams looking to find interior guys that can still get after the quarterback. And following the injury to Jonathan Allen and another winning team, I could see the Commanders being interested in trading for Shelby Harris. Now, Harris is probably not going to get you as much as Smith just because he is a little bit older and also he is not a defensive end, which is just a little bit higher on the pecking order. So I could see the Browns using one of their six-round draft picks to maybe move up around and do another day three pick swap, which I know isn't a great haul, but we're talking about a 34-year-old defensive tackle. Like Lower your sights a little bit for what you can get for some of these guys here. So far this year, though, I think Harris has been rock solid. It, it was like one of my more you know favorite under the radar signings the Browns have made under Andrew Barry this year. One tackle for loss, a forced fumble, but he's been so good at clogging up the interior of the offensive line, freeing up guys like Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa to go make plays in the backfield. He's also been really available, which is an awesome talent and skill to have because. It is something that gets uh, lost in the mix every so often. He's only missed 7% of games going all the way back to 2017. And he, like Darius Smith, has a super low base salary. So any team acquire him would not be taking on a huge bar tab of the remaining uh, base salary that has not been paid out so far. Now, another pro to moving on from Shelby Harris is it gives Mike Hall a bigger opportunity to get more snaps and more playing time and then develop more earlier on in his career. Because right now, he's somewhat you know stuffed down towards the bottom of the depth chart because of Quinton Johnson and Dalvin Tomlinson and Harris being above him. But with Shelby Harris potentially out of the way, the Browns can kind of kickstart a little bit of Hall, who played his first NFL game against the Eagles on Sunday. Now, when it comes to the entire Browns approach to the NFL trade deadline, how much do you think they should blow it up? Scale it 1 to 10. 1 being they should not make any more trades, that you regret them trading Amari Cooper. 10 being they should trade everyone. And by everyone, I mean everyone. I'm not at 10. I'm not trading Miles Garrett. I'm not trading Denzel Ward. Those guys are off the table for me. But I'm probably at like a 7, right? By seven, I mean, if you get a really good offer for someone like David Njoku, who I don't want to trade, but if you get a really good offer, I would definitely consider it because the rebuild needs to happen. All right, moving on to our third and final trade candidate. We'll go to the other side of the, def of the defensive line. It is offensive guard Wyatt Teller. So Teller has missed the last three weeks with a knee injury, but I Offensive linemen are tough to acquire at the trade deadline because that's usually not a spot teams want to offload since you don't rotate those guys like you do a defensive end where if you lose a Darius Smith, you can kind of put the next guy behind him into a larger role. But I think you might make an exception for Teller. And I could see the Houston Texans, who are really banged up on their interior of the offensive line, making a move. Now, you're not going to get much for Teller, not because he's not a good football player, but because he has a decent contract beyond 2024. His 2025 cap hit is $14.4 million. 
it's going to be tough to find a team that wants to take on the rest of his contract. His base salary for this year is super low, but you got to factor in, can a team find, or can you find a team that wants to take on that big of a cap hit for 2025? You may not get a whole lot in return. So I think this is just one of those trades where you're just kind of making the trade to at least get the contract off of your books. And that's kind of the pro of this trade. Not so much getting draft capital in return, but at least just getting some money for 2025 freed up. But Teller has been one of the more, I'd say, underappreciated guards in football. I mean, he's been a frequent Pro Bowler the last couple of years. You can check out his PFF rank. I mean, we're looking at a guy who, before he went down, was 27th among 75 qualified guards. The last four years before that, four straight years of being a top 20 guard in football. And this, like Mike Hall, would open up a val an avenue for Zach Zinter to get a larger role on this team and kind of get him ready for what likely will be a starting gig for him in 2025 regardless because I don't see the Browns returning Betonio and Teller at both of their price tags for next season. So if you're already kind of looking to the future a little bit with Zinter, why not start that right now? That way he can get his feet wet this year and there are no growing pains next season. So of the three guys we looked at today, which one would you want to trade the most? So Darius Smith is going to get you the most in return. Shelby Harris, I think, is just a good move to at least get Mike Hall on the field a little bit more. And similar for Wyatt Teller to free up Zach Zinter for the rest of the season. Now, one guy that I did not mention because I'm still holding out a little bit on this trade happening is Greg Newsom. I've seen his name tossed out a bunch, and I wouldn't be surprised if Newsom gets dealt, but I don't think he's as likely as other people think he is. Andrew Barry really values corners. I think this defense or this coaching staff likes Newsom, and I don't think they want to completely pull off the tarp on the defense and go, yep, we are selling everyone. You can even have our young, talented players at valuable positions like cornerback. I know people like to, you know, dog on Newsom. The guy's a starting corner in the NFL. And sure, he may not live up to first-round potential, but he is still a valuable starting corner across the league. So I think this is a trade that is not as likely to happen as others think it is. But if a star corner were to go down before November 5th and a team calls the Browns and gives them an offer they can't refuse, then Newsom is probably a goner. Before we sign off, I do want to give some quick shout-outs to the Brown and Orange Club. Appreciate you guys for supporting the channel, not wavering, hanging out with us every single Sunday during our watch parties. Appreciate you all once again for being such devote fans to the channel and to the team, of course. So shout out to everyone in the Brown and Orange Club. If you want to get added, $50 Super Chat during our watch parties, and we'll add you to the mix. All right, that's going to do it for us on today's episode. Hit us up over on Instagram, by the way, Browns Report IG, posting content over there, trying to grow my following. So if you have an Instagram account, follow us, Browns Report IG, and I'll see you all later.